Julius Rosenwald became partners with Richard Sears in 1895. Sears was what you could call a swashbuckling salesman. He would sell things he didn't have. He would sell things he didn't even understand. What he enjoyed was the selling. Under Rosenwald's leadership, Sears Roebuck became the largest retailer in the country. Julius Rosenwald had two personalities. He was a tough businessman. And then, of course, this other side, the civil rights champion, somebody who really saw the disgrace in this country of African Americans being treated so poorly. Education was seen as a dangerous thing, uh, and white Southerners wanted to keep it out of black people's hands. Rosenwald was clearly affected by the Jewish belief in tzedakah. Giving charity was justice and righteousness. It was a fundamental commandment. It's a wonderful story of cooperation between this philanthropist who did not have to care about black people, but who did, and who expended his considerable wealth in ensuring that they got their fair shake in America. Julius Rosenwald and Booker T. Washington combined with this plan for building black schools, they are engaging in a radical experiment. It's a wonder they were able to achieve it, but achieve it they did. And in the end, 5,000 plus schools are built all over the South. Julius Rosenwald created black schools throughout the South. Without that initiative, uh, we would have had a different America. It was a little school a short distance from my home, walking distance, beautiful little building. It was a Rosenwald school. It was the only school we had. I thought my school was grand. It was the Lafayette County Training School, so there. The Rosenwald Fund was the single most important funding agency for African-American culture in the 20th century. If you look at the list of people who receive money from the Rosenwald Fund, it's literally a who's who of black America. In the Jewish tradition, we talk about righteous action this notion of tikkun olam. You do work on repairing the world. 